In the previous video, I claimed that dynamic method selection is pretty simple. And it is, but the issue is that it just takes some time to wrap your mind around. And also, I will admit, this is the topic that I feel like I have the hardest time teaching in this class. So to really set the stage, I have a puzzle for you here. And I want you to spend a few minutes, ideally, just trying to come up with an answer to each of these four calls down here. So let me explain what's going on. On the left, I have this interface animal, which has three methods, greet, sniff, and praise, that take animal arguments. On the right, I have a dog class, which implements animal, and it has a sniff animal method and a praise dog method. Okay? So that's the whole situation. And then I create an animal a variable, which is actually a dog, but you know we know we can do that. Just like you could put a um, S list in a list 61B box, you could put a dog in an animal box. Then we have a dog D, which is equal to new dog, and then we have these four method calls here. Okay. Now, before you do the puzzle, I'm actually going to do one little thing, which is I'm going to explicitly show the default methods that get inherited by the dog class, because I think it'll help guide your thinking. So even though it's going to add even more text to an already text-heavy slide, I still think it's a good idea. So once I do that, I have two default methods, greet and praise. You'll notice that the sniff method, I didn't copy the default over, because it is overridden by the dog class. OK, so given all that, Try and come up with an answer, and uh, you know I'm going to end the video here, and then I'll talk about it a lot more in the next video. But I really want you to actually sit down and try this, to try and get a sense of where you run into trouble. Because if you just watch me do the answer in a moment, you'll say, well, of course. But I want you to try and see if you uh, run into any surprises.